going he's leaving her but it's not like that oh, so really? it's much more dramatic to it's not sudden right yeah, it's, it's not it's, sudden it really right. might, and that gets the whole town involved and right. so i think that's a better story uh, right. a better drama or, for the yeah for a, for a movie yeah. yeah for a movie setting for well a, when you're telling it in an hour and 45 minutes you kind of have to leave some of it out yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no i just i'd like that better than them just talking mm -hmm. and him saying i'm sorry i'm leaving i mean yeah. that was you know he needed to, he needed to disappear and leave her at the altar. So much worse. Yeah, you know, so and then that, and then that means that you can add in the phone thing and the like. His his real kind of uh, yeah. him never kind of just kind of being too embarrassed or not ready to go and say sorry and talk to her and all that kind of stuff. He if you kind a of had a conversation in the book, he has a number of phones, but he keeps the message that it, it oh, transfers them. Oh. Right, right, right. But it's this is so much better to have a taped up phone. Yeah, it was duck, fun. Duct tape. Yeah. Duct yeah. tape, beat up duct tape on <laughs> yeah. 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 So how was it um, performing in front of a large audience like that, oh, musically? It was uh, really scary. <laughs> um, and luckily we kind of, because Bethany really understood that I wasn't a singer and that I was going to need to to train in some way so we worked on the songs we kind of got the band together and worked on the songs with the band and then uh, and then we do little tiny performances mm -hmm. where we kind of invite friends and people that like friends of friends and the, like we do performances that would get slightly bigger so I'd get a chance to be on stage and we'd watch uh, different artists performing and uh, and then we'd see what they do like how they interact with the audience and all of that kind of stuff so it was a real because it's not something that i do it was something that i really had to kind of study and uh, and emulate rather than just be like yeah go crazy on stage we got the I'll, right kind of attitude on there oh on thank the stage you. yeah 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 thanks i uh yeah I, I decided not to go too much for the luke bryan like like hip <laughs> hip rotations and a little more for kind of like the Dirk bentley stand and, and deliver. And nobody threw underwear at you either. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was in the cut. That was cut out. <laughs> <laughs> so you had really done no performing really at all in terms of singing like on stage or anything no, like that? In, in school, uh, I, I played Danny in Greece when I was maybe 12. <laughs> um, so that was cool. <laughs> um, especially because I kind of yeah, I kind of wanted to be Elvis when I was a kid, and uh, yeah, I would, yeah, I would do my hair. I would do my hair like Elvis with shampoo, and like shampoo oh. my hair, like, oh. kind of be Elvis in the mirror. But then I didn't know what, what hair gel was, so I sometimes would just put shampoo in my hair and leave it, and try and leave the house. And my mum would be like, Alex, not again. And that made me run back upstairs and wash it out. Yeah. <laughs> what okay so now that you've done this role yes what role would you like to do now you want to be James Bond oh gosh one day <laughs> one day that's the dream um, yeah no I'd, I'd play James Bond definitely um, Car Carol Smith thinks they're grooming you yes yeah that's what she said oh really they yeah. grooming me for James Bond yeah that's what they said <laughs> well yeah it's Sony I've worked with Sony before maybe they're undercover grooming me for James <laughs> yeah, there you go um, yeah. I yeah I have a I have a, a a movie coming out called Hot Summer Nights, where I play. It comes out in the summer. Are you seeing those summer nights as Danny? Ah, mm -hmm. uh? no, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's hot those summer. Summer. <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, and so that comes out in the summer, and I play like a guy from Cape Cod. So it's kind of more of a Bostony accent and mm. Bostony vibe. So like it's you can't have a guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of easier for English people because they don't say there are's, and neither do we. Right. So, uh, so that's cool. That's got Timothy Chalamet in it and uh, Michael Monroe. Oh. Um, Timothy Chalamet's a hot. Yeah, yeah, he's, right now. yeah. I saw him on TV the other day next to uh, next to Daniel Day Lewis. It was yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's a, an exciting project. Um, and I've got a TV show coming out called Siren, mm -hmm. which comes out on Freeform uh, March 29th. Is it is it easy to move back and forth between movies and TV, or is it completely different? Uh, it was a it was a new experience, especially because American American TV is a whole a whole new a whole new beast. It's just the amount the production value and the amount of uh, people that are involved, and 
you kind of have a little more like you have a little less time than you do in movies uh, especially to prepare and stuff because you're getting scripts through quite consistently um, but it's an amazing learning experience and what's cool about it too is you film your stuff and you know that in three months it's going to come out mm -hmm. and then it's going to be out every week for the next kind of ten weeks there's something really because with movies, you make movies and you then wonder for the next kind of eight months when it's going to come out. Change, when it's going to the day. You know? so, yeah, yeah. so it's kind of a more regulated, yeah, you kind of... The siren has something to do with mermaids? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the, the, the mythology of the siren kind of mixed with the mythology of the mermaids. So they're these creatures that lure fishermen to their death. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like if you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, the, I think it's Stranger Tides, mm -hmm. where the, there's that sequence with the mermaids and they're not like these kind of splash creatures or aerial creatures, they're more of these, they are beautiful in their own way, but they draw, they lure these fishermen to their death. So, so a beautiful woman has never been dangerous to you? <laughs> what? Beautiful woman and dangerous? That's an oxymoron. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's definitely... <laughs> So is it a, is it a, a fantasy thing, a sci-fi? It's kind of yeah, it's a sci-fi. It's like a fantasy sci-fi drama, but they ground it all in reality. So it's that it plays on the idea that ninety-five percent of the oceans remain unexplored, mm -hmm. and therefore, um, why couldn't these creatures exist? So they kind of go into the more scientific idea of why they, how they could exist. Which is kind of which is interesting. So for my character, I'm a marine biologist who discovers them, and he's trying to figure all of that thing out. Um, he's trying to figure all of that out. Um, so it's kind of exciting. And then at the same time, he's been sirened, so he's trying to deal with all of that. Yeah. Being sirened is when they they do their song, and it has an effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hypnotic effect. Yeah, when when did you know you you were going to be an actor? Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I think when you're when you when you're young, like it's always been something that I've been really into. Um, from just ever since Danny, in, ever Danny since and ever and since Sunday Danny, nights, that yeah. applause. <laughs> um, you're twelve years old. I, yeah, I, uh, I've always kind of, it's always been like uh, from a kid, as a as a boy you're kind of I think you want it like it pulls the the drama teachers that see some potential in you mm -hmm. they're kind of like they they're trying to convince you to to do it when you're a kid I feel mm -hmm. like but you want to go off and like I wanted to go play soccer that's what I wanted, wanted to do because that's what boys do you know that's just, but then uh as you kind of get United. Oh, Chelsea fan Chelsea fan. Oh, Chelsea. Yeah. but then as you get older um yeah you start to kind of go against necessarily the, st the stereotypes and you try and, and you kind of figure out who you who you are and what you're into and yeah I was I think always watching movies and loved performances like um, yeah from J from like James Dean and Marlon Brando and Ed Norton I think is amazing and mm -hmm. uh, Michael Fassbender and mm -hmm. And then more classics like Paul Newman and Robert Redford too. I mm -hmm. think they're awesome. So I think I was always watching movies and kind of like more as a as a student. Whereas I'd watch soccer and I'd be a fan of it. So I was, so I kind of realised that that was the the difference. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah, I got the acting bug. Well, I'm glad you did. I, I enjoyed your performance. Thank you very much. And I, I hope to see more from you. It was great to yeah, it was great to hear from a from a, a pastor too. Well, I'm a rare duck. Uh, <laughs> not many movie critics are pastors. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. They're, they're not many movie critics who even go to church. But, so but we get the pastor's seat. <laughs> we we get the pastor's seat of approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Great. Yeah. Um, it's and, a PG movie. It's PG. It's a PG. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it's got the prodigal son. There's elements sure, of that in sure. there too. Yeah. Um, which I think was just completely nat. I think that just came out kind of naturally. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great thing to be a part of. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did it. It was. Thank I, you. I, I appreciated it, and and uh, thank you for this interview. Too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for talking time. to me, guys.
Thank you. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone get everyone to ask the questions and 